Hello, welcome to, of course, episode number eight of the Nasty Metal Podcast. Now, for today's episode's topics, well, let, let's just say there, there are not a whole lot of topics, but there's definitely, it's definitely going to at least take a, a bit, bit of a chunk, of course, uh, of this episode. Uh, but again, as far as the usual topics are, are, are concerned, Yes, I still am going to run down uh, the next, you know, following two weeks scheduling for like episode content and so on. And of course, I still have the Q&A segment for this episode. But other than that, as far as other topics, there's only one major thing I really want to talk about. But I'll eventually we'll get to that. It's more uh, one of the almost kind of what the fuck moments, at least on when it comes to at least social media and concerning a certain musician. So, without further ado, let's definitely just run down the scheduling first uh, before I get into that topic. All right. So, uh, for of course this week's uh, schedule, well, of course this is coming out Sunday, but for Monday. You know, it's uh, an album of the week episode. It will be, of course, uh, a uh, which would I would believe it's a, a album of the week episode number eighty-two, and that episode is going to be focused, of course, on the of, of course it's hitting its fourth anniversary. As of course is none other than the solo debut album from, of course, Ozzy Osbourne, Blizzard of Oz. So that is going to be uh, Monday's Am of the Week episode. Uh, but of course, when it comes to Wednesday and Friday, well, the Wednesday review is going to be, of course, a Doomsday Today Records release. It's, of course, is one that's been sitting in my cassette box for several months here ever since, of course, that first package from Paul of Doomsday Today Records is, of course, is Dolores. And it's a, a, a kind of a comp because combining their only two releases on one cassette. So that will be, of course, Wednesday's review and Friday's review. It, it, it's for sure, it, it, I'm going to make sure it's going to be a review, of course, of the newest, which by the time I'm recording it, it has already been dropped. It's, of course, is again, the newest album from, of course, New Wave of British heavy metal legends, Raven Metal City. I am hoping and for, and for sure that is going to be Friday's review. Now, as far as any episode that might be on, let's say, Sunday, at least that Sunday, it, I hope, I'm looking to maybe see it could be a seal to reveal, maybe on the physical copy of a uh, Metal City, but really that is right now up in the air until if fucking Amazon ships the fucker out. But I'm not gonna try and get into any of that. So, there. I'm hoping it might be, but it could also be a box set show, guys. And oh, I know how I haven't done one in a while. And in my, on my last Nasty Metal podcast episode, I did, I think I kind of almost somewhat promised a box set showcase video. But as the weeks gone by, nothing ever came to, to for, uh, fruition. So, um, it, it is what it is. Uh, some days I just feel like doing it. Some days I don't. So really, it's not as every day, but it may, may, maybe it's not a bad thing that I sometimes give stuff a little bit of a break. All right, maybe maybe I might be up uh, to actually doing uh, at least recording a box set showcase, but that but I don't know. It could end up being I don't think it would be uh, released on that Sunday. That's only uh, if I don't get, uh, get my copy of Metal City at least until then. But still. Um, do, uh, don't hold your breath on what, what if nothing ever comes out on that Sunday, maybe the following Sunday. So th there you go. Now, as for the following week, that album of the week, of course, for the following Monday, which of course will be uh, album of the week episode number 83, as of course is going to be another anniversary milestone esque episode, at least on the album that will be hitting its uh, 30th anniversary. As, that's of course is none other than of course one of ACDC's biggest albums and one of the albums that definitely really uh, kept them up in of course uh, the mainstream for many years and definitely kept and uh, in many ways one of the the bigger selling albums in ACDC's uh, discography since of course albums like Back in Black, How Out of Hell, uh, for those about uh, uh, for those about to rock is of course The Razor's Edge. So that is gonna, of course, is going to be that week's 
am on the week. And of course, for uh, the Wednesday and Friday review for that week, the Wednesday review for that following week is, of course, there's going to be another Doomsday's Today Records production release. Uh, it's, of course, is, uh, let me see if I, if, um, I think it's Broken Hate Addict, uh, Spoiled Human, Humanic Waste, or is it, or is that the title of the album? I guess that uh, the name of the band is actually Spoiled Humanic Waste, and the album is titled Broken Hate Addict. So that will be, of course, the Wednesday review on that week, and of course, that Friday's review. It's up in the air. Who knows if, if it's going to be a review for, of course, the newest album. Of course, uh, in many ways, also a comeback album in some aspects. Uh, Reignited from Torch. That could be that Friday's uh, album review. But it, it could also be a review for, of course, uh, the most recent album from, of course, Swedish metal band Blizzen. So it, it, it could be. It could be any of those, those two albums that could end up being that Friday's review. But... Right, so really, it's all up in the air. If I do end up getting my copy in, or somehow end up hearing or listening to, of course, Reignited from Torch, it will, of course, will be that Friday's review. But if I don't end up getting a copy and I don't somehow end up uh, listening on the Amazon app, I will be, of course, doing a review for, of course, the Blizzard album. So there, there you goes. But again, it's all up in the air. What ends up being uh, that Friday's review? Shit always has. Ever since the whole pandemic, everything has been all, all um, warped around. Uh, stuff you don't. I, I have again when it comes to uh, especially Amazon. They, they, they've really gotten a little bit weird on when to ship things out. I mean, I understand because of the whole situation, but still, for for me, since I know everyone wants to at least see some of these reviews for I think some of these albums, especially I want to review some of these albums. It makes it a little bit more difficult. All right, it makes it kind of difficult, but I have to at least roll with the punches. So there you go. All right, so that ends up being, of course, the the schedule for, of course, these next two weeks. It's definitely booked. So, very cool. And I hope all of you are looking forward to all that scheduled content and when it comes out. All right, finally, let's now get on to, of course, the uh, other um, topics here. So, I got all that out of the way. Uh, uh. All right. Okay, so this is gonna this is really fucking crazy. It's time to uh, go on to to, to to my next topic. Bye again before I get into the Q and A segment, which is in many ways you're probably gonna expect to be almost closer, maybe to the end uh, of the the podcast, but it, it it will definitely be after this topic. And I really want want to talk about this. I really want to fucking talk about this. It is regarding a certain musician. Uh, that's of course is none other than Greg May of of course the U.S. Tyrant, which of course is we're speaking about the Tyrant that released albums such as Legends of the Dead and Too Late to Pray, and of course they had of course had released their newest album this year titled Hereafter, which I believe was yeah what was released through Shadow Kingdom Records. I can't recall if, if I ever read about at least of his social activity in the past, but due to, of course, a recent run-in with the one of my with, with a friend of mine on Facebook, I'm not going to name any names just to try and keep some of this at least professional because I don't know if, how he would feel if I was ever to say his name on here. But I'm just going to be very professional and not mention his name. I might read some of the uh, the comments here, but I won't just to kind of at least keep things at least professional and keep things safe. But I do have to kind of talk about some of this because I am a little bit surprised by 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 some of this to me. I know there are some friends of mine that aren't that are definitely are not surprised by this, but for me, I'm quite surprised because again, I don't follow Tyrant on fucking social media. So I'm, or especially Greg May, I don't follow. So the fact that I found out about how much he's a dick on social media is is completely surprised me. Because again, I dig those first two albums, and given that, that uh, I've I, I've 
I've made a few pretty good uh, friends with, uh, with some good musicians and so on, uh, bands I've dug over the past on, on social media, and they're pretty nice, nice fucking guys. This guy, on however, I've never been fucking social media friends with, and after a lot of these run-ins, and uh, given his reputation, now, uh, now being more aware of his re reputation, I don't have any... Any, uh, 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 I don't have any issues of, ne of not ever being, uh, social media friends with this fucking guy. I have no problem with not being friends with him at this point. Holy shit. What a fucking prima donna. He might as well be right next to John Cyrus of Agent Steel and at times maybe Chris Logue of Savage Grace. Holy goddamn shit. But the thing is, he's just a fucking dick. Let me find this. Uh, I actually screenshot a lot of these uh, conversations. I actually did, and I might even find my, uh, my my reply to his post and so on. Uh, at least to to my friend's posts on the whole situation. At least it, uh, since I gave my thoughts and so on. But good lord, where is the, this at on my computer? Where's the fucking screen? Uh, isn't it here? Ah, here we go. I think I finally found uh found. Where I kept all of it. All right, here we go. Whoo, boy! Get ready to hear some of this shit. Get ready. Get ready to hear some of this. Oh my! Really? Not the new tyrant, because apparently the whole thing got started is because of my good my uh, uh, again. I, I, he's a pretty much a, a Facebook buddy of mine in some ways, and again, I am friends with him on there. Uh, I follow him. He apparently didn't choose the new Tyrant album to be his favorite, but he did say that it was a good album, but he picked the new, the new Sirith Ungle album as his favorite of, of course, 2020. And so Greg May apparently got a little bit, a little pissy-eyed and actually threw a fucking temper tantrum. And apparently he's like this. And I'll elaborate a little more on other, other shit about him, but here we go. Really, uh, not the new Tyrant. Hereafter, new Sirith Ungle, the vocals sound like a band on side two of a Metal Massacre album. They're laughable, see ya butt kisser, M <sighs> fucking hell. And of course, both Tyrant and Sirith Ungle were both on uh, one of the metal, ma uh, metal Massacres. Sirith Ungle was actually on the very first Metal Massacre, and guess of uh, which, uh, uh, which uh, band, or at least Two of the bands on that comp actually went to become household names of being actually one of the biggest bands ever. Rat and Metallica. Both Rat and Metallica were both featured, of course, on the first Metal Massacre. And both those two bands are like the, the biggest acts in this day, especially Metallica. Metallica, in some ways, are in the fucking Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And uh, pretty much have sold over a lot of arenas. Um, I mean, Sarah Thungle probably would, would have deserved that in some ways, but to be quite honest, given at least with guys like Tim Baker, I don't think they really gave a shit. But the fact that he's, he's completely, I don't know, butthurt over the fact that Sarah, Sarah Thungle seems to get more praise than, than his fucking band is... Should, uh, talk about actually ass hurt for at least 40 years being ass hurt for this fucking long. Really. Maybe, maybe, maybe th this should give you a good indicator why fucking uh, Tyrant didn't become as much of a household name as Sarah Thungle did. That this should actually give you a good, at least, uh, a, a reason why. Uh, again, and also say uh, to call my, my good friend a butt kisser, listen. Obviously, given from Greg May's social media uh, uh, reputation... He's known for having people kissing his ass because, after all, he's getting mad that that uh, my my friend on Facebook is not choosing his album as his best uh, album of the year, and that he's getting pissy over him picking the Sarah Thungle shows. He wants somebody to kiss his ass on fucking social media. That right there is some poor fucking um, sportsmanship. That right there is is a poor attitude. And it's probably again. It's that because of probably because of attitude like that is why I don't think uh, Tyrant didn't get at uh, to be in the spot that they did. That uh, let's say a band like Sir Thungle did. I mean, yeah, they might have had uh, some issues towards the end of at least of uh, was it the Paradise Lost album, but they still somewhat kept their uh, kept their head up high 
fucking th this guy right here is probably pissed that uh, that every one of those bands got bigger than him. Boo fucking who? And of course, he had to reply again to my fucking friend saying, "All right, go back to your crack pipe and kiss more ass." I I, I can't believe. It. I mean, you know, I'm gonna go on to the final fucking comment on here. I'm gonna go with the final final comment that I actually had screenshot on my computer here because I was trying to also share this with, with a friend of mine just to show to him. And again, he got a good fucking kick of it. Again, painkiller of uh, force of steel, uh, which uh, apparently again he knew more of uh, his. Social online activity and how much of a douchebag he is online. Still, and all this apparently it also escalated to my friend apparently also showing a picture of at least or or unless he or unless Greg may found one of his past pictures or some. He probably said he yeah he actually my friend said that the German tyrant are better than his tyrant and he got pissed and who knows I think my my friend probably just did that just to take a shot at him just for the sake of it just to, to add more salt to the wound. But this is what again what Greg made that and uh, replied back. Only a crackhead piece of shit would listen to his pussy music. Guess you couldn't tell by the am cover because you're a crackhead. Moving on, better things to do, and of course, thumbs down emoji. And the picture he's using is the am running hot from time, which was actually the final am from time before they. Uh, uh, split up, and I'm referring to the German Tyrant. You know, the band that released sounds such as Me Machine, and uh, I'm actually forgetting now the um, uh, their second album, the one that's got got the the spikes coming out of the 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 male's fist on the cover. I think it was like released on Scratch Records in like 1986. Uh, let me find the German Tyrant here, just uh, on the Metal Archives to kind of at least talk about the at least uh, mention the album title. Oh yeah, Fight for Your Life. I thought that was on me, but it wasn't. Uh, yeah, he used... Actually, no, Running Hot wasn't their last album. It was actually Ruling the World that was their last album. Because uh, after that, they uh, split up. Still, and who knows, he probably again did this one to take another shot at the German Tire. Because apparently, it then came up in that comment section that somebody went and said that Greg May actually tried suing the German Tyrant for the name. But the funny thing is, is that he went and sued the German Tyrant after they fucking split up. The German, according to the Metal Archives here, the German Tyrant actually split up in 1989. Greg May, a pair of the U.S. Tyrant, just went and uh, began to sue them sometime in the early 90s. He started suing them the fucking early 90s after they just split up. How the fuck are you going to sue them from ever using the name if they've already been split up, of course now the German tyrant are actually back together. Uh oh, was I was I was I supposed to actually say that? Is Greg May could very could he actually be watching this? Oh oh god, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Maybe may I might have put the German tyrant in fucking jeopardy. Oh my god, <laughs> fuck you. Still, still though, this is just so stupid. And the thing is, the fact that that and, and it seems like from, from this attitude, it seems like Greg May wants to be the only one that used the name Tyrant, which is absolute fucking horseshit. Because before, uh, uh, let's not run down the time frame. I mean, you look in the Metal Archives, you look up the name Tyrant, there's about, I don't know, I can count uh, at least how many bands we got here. We got one Tyrant, two Tyrant, three Tyrant, four Tyrant, five Tyrant, six Tyrant, seven Tyrant, eight Tyrant, nine Tyrant, ten Tyrant, eleven Tyrant, uh, twelve Tyrant, uh, 13 Tyrant, 14 Tyrant, 15 Tyrant, 16 Tyrant, 17 Tyrant, 18, uh, 18 uh, Tyrant, 19 Tyrant, 20 Tyrant, uh, 21 Tyrant, and 22 Tyrant. There are 22 fucking bands by the name of Tyrant, and only one of the Tyrants is, of course, is the U.S. Tyrant that we are right now referring to. The one that's, f at least, that was formed by Greg May in what year? 1978. There is also a few new wave of British heavy metal bands with the name Tyrant, and let's actually find that one. Oh, we got two new wave of British heavy metal bands with the name Tyrant. Let's look. Uh, if, if my internet doesn't... Oh, here we go. Well, this one was formed in 1980, but there's a second uh, new wave of British heavy metal Tyrant, uh, or at least a second new wave of British heavy metal uh, band with the name Tyrant. Let's see when they were formed. All right, 1980. So I guess... Uh, Wait a minute, did someone just give out fucking bullshit information because of... 
I, I thought someone said that one. Uh, who knows? Well, that, that's already made one of them look like an idiot. So I guess which tyrant was this one that was formed earlier? I mean, there's a. I know there's a few other ones. Well, this kind of went went in a little direction I was not expecting. Still, there's there's so many other bands here by the name of Tyrant that really, in, in order for him to sue, he's got to uh, sue every single one of these tyrants in order for him to actually have that. And that and that right there, as far when it comes to at least the legal tasks, that is that's nearly fucking impossible. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of the time when the black metal weapon decided to sue the UK weapon, the New Wave or British Heavy Metal Band, which then led to, of course. Weapon call themselves Weapon UK, but I guess they decide that because again there are so many other bands by the name Fucking Weapon. Yeah. Yeah, I know that, that that's a whole other rabbit hole when it comes to at least bands sharing the same fucking name. And the thing is, Tyrant is kind of a generic name anyways for for a band to begin with, because of of course you're probably gonna expect almost any other band to probably take the name to begin with. So the fact that you're trying to choose something original that might be seem something that's unique to you. The fact that you chose Tyrant makes you even more of a dumbass. And obviously, Greg May is obviously right there, given the, the way he's acted towards my good friend. And the fact that he de uh, decided to sue the German Tyrant just, uh, just a few years after they split up shows you the brains this fucking guy actually has. It shows you the brains on this fucking idiot. He's an idiot for sure. Greg May, I mean, okay, with all due respect... He's not a bad guitar player, okay? He's not bad. But the thing is, even Ted Nugent isn't a bad guitar player, but he sure is at times a fucking dick in real life. And Greg May might as well be very similar. Actually, you know what? He did actually kind of praise uh, Ted Nugent as well. Because I guess Greg May and Ted Nugent have something in common. They love to be assholes for, for, for the sake of being a fucking asshole on, on uh, social media. Because of they get pissed at somebody that doesn't, I guess, pick them as their uh, favorite artist. You know what? Right here, since this is all audio, you can't see me giving the double, uh, uh, the double bird right here. Yeah, fuck you. All right, so let me also now get into my uh, uh, comment because again, I posted also, or uh, at least my thoughts on uh, my my friend's posts on this whole situation. Again, I was so surprised by some of this; I could not believe that. Uh, I was very surprised by how much of a dick Greg May is online. And the thing is, again, apparently Bart is one of the reasons why Bart Gable, Gabriel of Skull Records hasn't dealt with him because apparently there's also a situation where apparently he got a little bit mad that apparently Bart Gabriel and uh, Harry Conklin, who calls himself the Tyrant as his nickname, uh, uh, again, the, Bart Gable posts a photo with him and apparently Greg May got pissed at. Apparently, I guess there's also beef between Harry Conklin and Greg May because apparently he, got, he gets mad that Harry Conklin uh, refers to himself as the tyrant. Fuck you, Greg May. Fuck you. Everyone's allowed to at least use a goddamn name. So what, what are you going to be mad if a fucking professional wrestler go, goes and calls himself the tyrant? Fuck you too. <laughs> Asshole. You don't, you, it, it, listen, it, it, the, the, the name Tyrant, it is this, again, it's all even similar to when fucking uh, Gene Simmons wanted to put a pat on the heavy metal symbol, or at least the, uh, the devil horns, or so on, which again, which, what, uh, Dio used, and even Spider-Man to uh, some extent, even though, again, that's what fucking, uh, I mean, I loved when, uh, when Dio was still alive, he actually posted a video, he, he, he uh, commented on the whole situation, and he, it basically, uh, really, uh, pretty much, uh, put the best. He uh, he really kind of did, did a great way of putting down Gene Simmons. He really made it very clear on how he does the sign and the difference between how he does it and how Gene Simmons does it. He shows how Dio does it, and he showed how Gene Simmons does, it, which is more so the Spider-Man web thing, fucking you know, uh, the Spider-Man thing. Therefore, it's too different. So basically, he, he was going to literally put a, put a patent on something Marvel Comics already fucking did. So I think Marvel Comics would probably get more, more would get away with putting a patent on the, the Spider-Man uh, thing than Gene Simmons. Stupid. It's absolutely stupid, this whole thing. 
Because uh, just because you got the right to actually use the legal system doesn't mean, or I mean, just because you got the power to use it doesn't mean you have the right to actually do it. Or I have some goddamn common sense, but I guess for our old Greg May is, I guess common sense isn't uh, in an existence. Uh, he doesn't know that it even exists. Fucking asshole. All right, let me look at. Uh, let me try and uh, find this. Uh, my uh, post on here. You know what? Let me get. Uh Yeah, I know this is this is going to take a while here. Uh, trying to find my uh, good friend over here, so I can find that post. Da 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 da. Yeah, I, I mean I, I can trash talk more on fucking uh, Greg May, but right now I'm choosing not to yet because of uh, I'll 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 come up with my rest my fucking conclusions of of uh, um. Greg, oh, 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 a piss headed Greg May, I guess I can call him. I seem to, I don't know. Uh, here we go. Here's my, here's my reply. I found it. So here's what I said on my friend's post here to at least the whole situation between, uh, Greg May's, uh, butt, butt hurt response to him of not picking, of him, of my good friend picking the Sarah Thungle am over his. So here's my here's my uh, reply. Well then, I guess he would also not approve that I, my favorite album of this year is Infidel from Ambush. Oh jeez, a young band. Well, them young dudes have more talent in their pinky finger than uh, Greg May's entire career, which actually wasn't much to be honest. And I'll elaborate a bit of that uh, until after this. Now I don't mind Tyrant's first two albums, but they never amazed me. Just sounded average and pretty much sound like a B grade Dio era. Uh, Black Sabbath. There was nothing unique to Tyrant. Now, as far as my thoughts on Sierra Thungle, now they were by far more unique sounding. Team Baker really didn't sound like anybody at the time. Plus, Sierra Thungle predated Tyrant by a whole decade. They also have more albums in their discography than Tyrant has. Greg May can feel bitter all he wants, but at the end of the day, Tyrant were just a tiny blip on the radar. Nothing special. So there you go. There's my, my, my reply, and yes, some of that is as simple. I mean, okay, again, like I stated, the, those two albums are not bad, but the kind of make make your band to be out to be the greatest band that ever walked the face of the earth is uh, obviously when you listen to even the, those two tiny, especially Legions of the Dead. No, you were you weren't. While there are fine listens, they obviously weren't spectacular. No, I will never put Legions of the Dead next to any other classic metal album. I won't put it next to any of the stuff that Black Sabbath have released. No, I would never fucking put it to at least Holy Diver Adio. No, I would never put it next to at least Screaming for Vengeance, Saturdays of Destiny, The uh, Defenders of the Faith, Stained Class, or Painkiller. I would not put it next to that album. I wouldn't even put it next to fucking Metal on Metal from Anvil. I would not even put it next to also Methods of Madness from Obsession. I am being very clear and honest. I will not put it to any of that hell. I won't put it net next to any of the classic albums that Iron Maiden have released, even including uh, fucking No Prayer for the Dying and Fear of the Dark. If that pisses anybody off, then obviously I have no hard feelings for you. So there, really, there is. There's nothing amazing about Greg May to begin. He may be a good guitar player, but given his attitude, he really thinks he is like God's gift to, to the earth. And it, of course, it should be very obvious he's also kind of a, a a Christian. But the thing is, he's like the worst kind. He apparently once even said some very inhum inhumane things to a person on also on on social media, especially on uh, Facebook. Apparently, he went and said. Uh, so I can't, this person apparently posted, I guess, uh, the fact that apparently his kid is sick, and apparently he also posted something black metal related, even though, again, he states that he, he's not a black metal fan, but apparently posted that. Well, Greg May, who was, of course, the follows this guy, went and commented and said, well, no wonder your kid's sick. You listen to black metal. What the fuck kind of comment is that? So you basically are... Uh, uh, why? So, 
that right there was was really fucking tasteless. It just really just proved how much of a dick this guy is on social media. To fucking say that, that no wonder your kid is sick because you listen to that. You have to... It, what is this? 1990? How old are you? Are you playing a fucking metal band yourself and you're gonna, and you're gonna say such a tasteless comment like that? So I apparently, let's like say if the kid fucking dies, it's gonna say, well, no wonder your kid is dead. You listen to this. Fuck you. That that's a person's kid, and you're gonna fucking say that. Are you really for for somebody who fucking hails himself as a Christian? You really just showed yourself that you probably are not worthy of even being called a Christian. You shouldn't even be called one. You literally right there just proved you are a scumbag. And I'm going to say that on YouTube, you're a fucking scumbag and stuff like that. I think probably should, I think, uh, should get at least somebody from at, at least the guy who runs Shadow Kingdom should almost would just unsign you from there and cancel you. That shit is uncalled for to begin with. I don't care if you even were saying that as a fucking joke. You call yourself a Christian, you're going to tell somebody that no one of your kid is sick. What the fuck kind of human being are you? That right there is some absolute bullshit. So, so in the so so I guess to end my little rant on fucking Greg May. Uh, I I I really do do, do hope that 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 it, wherever you end up being when you fucking die, I actually hope that that at least who if some at least say Jesus or God are at the fucking other end of the gate, at least uh, over the eight. They fucking fu uh, use the goddamn trap door and fucking put you down there with goddamn Satan himself to at least fucking sit, uh, to at least torture you. You are obviously turned to be a, at least a human piece of filth, so fuck you, Greg May, and I actually will not listen to here after after the hell. I may not even just buy any of your fucking albums to begin with. After that, I'm pretty much might as well be done listening to fucking Tyrant. Fuck you, and thank you, fuck you, goodbye. So there we go. There's there's my little rant on uh, Greg May. Yes, it might have been a little harsh, but the fact that he says such shit like that and he acts like that on social media, you know what? I don't have to at least uh, listen to at least any more fucking crybabies to begin with. I guess in some ways, uh, Greg May might as well have his pussy powder because I guess it hadn't been powdered before. Fuck you. All right, so there we go. I got a little bit pissed off towards some of that. Again, when I, when I hear shit like that, when people say that towards somebody's kid, especially when they're sick, and they might as well, or, and especially if, if, let's say, if a kid is also dying, or to say shit like that, you know what? You obviously are not worth, uh, 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 you know, following anymore. I don't think you're worth it anymore. That's it. So, time to move on. Let's move on to something a little better now. Finally, let's get to the damn Q&A segment of, of course, uh, the, the uh, episode number eight of the Nasty Metal Podcast. Let me find uh, uh, the question here. It's only one question. It's actually from, uh, of course, uh, Storm Rider. Uh, of course, also on the last episode, uh, sent in a question, but he, he's got a question here for me. Uh, sadly, again, like I said, it's the only question, but you know what? This is actually not a bad. It's probably going to be... Since it's actually pretty much towards the end of this podcast anyways, uh, well, uh, this is actually not a bad question, and it's actually a good one to actually take up some of this. So, here we go. Let's find the question here. Okay, here it is. New question. What, which, kind, genre of movies do you like most, and can you give some examples? Okay, so that's very interesting. I normally don't always talk about movies, at least on at least on my podcast. I always kind of thought about, but I never really once did. But I do have some. I do dig some movies. Hell, um, when I did my that uh, one year's uh, Metal Tober was it of 2017, I did a little video basically on horror movies with that are based or at least some of my favorite horror movies and some of my favorite uh, or at least also topics of horror movies with that use. Uh, heavy metal songs or hard rock songs in its film soundtrack. So that, that should also give you a good, uh, a, at least, uh, indicator that I am definitely a horror movie fan and I definitely dig horror movies. But my other favorite movies as well, or at least genre movies, is action films. I pretty much, horror movies and action films are actually my favorite, are my go to kind of movies. I just, uh, uh, to me, when I'm looking for something that, to put on that I'm going to enjoy, that's going to be a blast at least to get me set. Sometimes horror movies will do that, though 
if I, if I really want, I want to get a little bit creeped out and especially uh, get my, uh, especially uh, my tingle sense, that I guess in many ways, my tingles creeped up, uh, I will put on a, a really good horror movie. And some of those for, for choices is actually Suspiria, the classic Dario Argento uh, Italian classic. That film is still, uh, especially Goblin's score in that film, I've stated before, that's one of the best film, score, uh, film scores in, in, in many films, actually. That is actually one of the best fucking film scores because it really sets the tone and the mood for that film and it, and it still creeps the fuck out of me. I still get creeped out by uh, their their film score. That's why I really don't all why I don't listen to the album very much often because of it really does kind of put me in in a in a, um, in, 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 in a headspace. It really kind of does put me in a big simple bubble that I am definitely in fear for my fucking life. I can't always listen to it. It really kind of especially if I'm listening to it pitch black dark and uh, in my room. Everything's all dark. It's at nighttime. There's nothing on. There's no lights. No nothing. I put that on. I'm immediately gonna be thinking that that uh, what what's going to happen to me in that movie is is going, what happens in that movie to to those people is gonna happen to me. I'm gonna get it's, uh, something's gonna happen. I can't always listen to it. It creeps the fuck out of me. So, but still, I love the film for those very many reasons. So definitely, horror movies are some of my favorites. But when it comes to action films. Good lord! I was I grew up actually watching action movies. I mean, as a kid, normally your parents don't, or especially your grandparents, they don't really, at least, they, you know, you don't expect them to just hit you up with at least an action film or an R-rated classic action movie. No, you expect them at least to give you a kids film. And yes, I was given a few of them when growing up. But but these family members. They sure fucking hit me up with the uh, the classic R-rated action movies. I mean, good lord, that's how I uh, I mean uh, one of my gateways to, of course, the action film genre was, of course, some of the Arnold Schwarzenegger films. I love fucking Total Recall. I love Predator. I love even the first two Terminators. Uh, what is it? Um, there's a few other ones in, in, in his uh, filmography that uh, I. Uh, pretty much grew up watching a lot. Uh, the Running Man. I love that. I've been quite a bit of that film, even though it's cheesy, but in some aspects. But that is, to me, the epitome of great 80s action cheese. I fucking love that uh, film, even though I know it strays far from at least uh, the source material because it was originally it was actually a Stephen King novel. And when I w go back and look at the, the the novel itself, or at least read the synopsis of that novel, it's definitely different compared to the film. But I still love the film. I I, I pretty much treat it just like it's a Schwarzenegger action movie. So that the, uh, so I I just dig those. Uh, I also uh, especially even dig films like again uh, Commando, Raw Deal. Uh, I'm just a, a a fucking Schwarzenegger nut in some, in many cases. Even even uh, the worst Schwarzenegger film is still enjoyable, though I'll take that back. There's at least one really bad Schwarzenegger film in his filmography. Uh, that's Junior. Good lord. Do not even... That, that right there... That... No. No. I will not fucking rewatch Junior. That, that right there is some fucking bad shit there. That is some absolute bad shit. Not even Schwarzenegger can fucking save that. At least, in some ways, he's at least enjoyable of Batman and Robin. But even that, it, it, it's it, compared to Junior, his performance in at least Batman and Robin is at least uh, film saving. Yes, he chews the scenery, but the scenery that gets chewed in Junior makes the scenery in fucking uh, Batman and Robin seem like Oscar uh, nominate. It, it, it really is like an Oscar winning, winning performance. Good oh God, no! I would not. That, that, that's a goddamn fever dream when it comes to at least Schwarzenegger films. I will not fucking watch Junior ever again. So there, there you go. I had to at least knock a at least a bit of Schwarzenegger's filmography. But when it comes to some of his action films, I, I'm a sucker for him. So I grew up watching a lot of those. So those are definitely ones. I also did Kindergarten Cop as well. Um, just, just, just don't don't tell the uh, the politically in, uh, correct. Uh, people down in uh, Portland, Oregon, that 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 it's a great fucking movie. D don't fucking tell any of the people in Portland, Oregon, because of they'll obviously seem seem to get really fucking uh they'll they'll definitely get uh riled up. That that that's for sure. <laughs> 
But yeah, I love that. And of course, when it comes to other action movies uh, uh, alongside Schwarzenegger, you've got Stallone. Though I think there's probably a f when it comes to between Schwarzenegger and Stallone, it's like almost somewhere between. I don't know how I could really put it. I'm like, well, it's the same using bands, for example. Schwarzenegger might as well be like ACDC or Motorhead, whereas Schwartz, uh, whereas Stallone, on the other hand, is probably more so... I don't want to say Judas Priest, even though I love the fuck out of Judas Priest, but even they've got to feel bad apples in their discography, but... Because of I'm trying to use a good one. It's like I, I like them. I don't know if I would. I, I almost would want to say Iron Maiden. Probably. But I think we can go. I think in many ways I think Iron Man is probably the best. It's like between ACDC or Motorhead and, and Iron Maiden. Iron Man is probably best reserved for uh, Stallone. Because of in some ways. There's some bad albums. Or at least some boring albums. And at least Iron Man to Scarvey. And that's kind of the thing when it comes to Stallone. He's like the, uh, the equivalent to of course Iron Man. When it comes to his filmography. When he's got good movies. Or good fucking movies. When he's got some pretty bad movies. And there are some boring movies. Oh yeah. They can definitely can be fucking tedious to watch. I mean. Um, I love. I do love First Blood. But some of the sequels, like, for example, Rambo First Blood 2, and of course, uh, Rambo, or just uh, Rambo 3. No, that, that, that is one also on the topic of uh, right-wing uh, action films. That's like the, the best example of just straight up to the core, uh, uh, pro-typical right-wing action films. The, I mean, and I'm also, it ruined the message of what it had at least going on with the first, with First Blood. I haven't seen some of the, the other newer uh, movies. I did see the movie that's just called Rambo, and I, I dug it. I liked it. I actually thought it's better than uh, those two sequels in the 80s. Uh, but I haven't seen seen the newest one, Last Blood, and I know I've, uh, there's some opinion where people say it's it's just as bad. Or some say uh, it's actually a better film, you know. I I've capped plenty. But to be quite honest, uh, uh, to me, it looks at least enjoyable in my opinion. Again, still, I just love action films. Actually, one of my other favorite action movies of all time. I've got the nice, awesome Arrow Blu-ray Special Edition. Or at least from Arrow uh, Film Videos that was given to me from, of course, my, my brother, uh, Robocop. Robocop was one of my absolute favorite action movies. I know some people also call it a science fiction film, but it's science fiction and action. And when it comes to action, it fucking delivers on the action. It's a, it, To me, it's one of my absolute favorite movies of all time. I do also like the second film as well. Oh boy. The, don't have me talk about the third film. Oh god. The third film was pretty much a way to taint at least the first two. It didn't do shit in the remake. Yes, I've got a poster of the remake. I mean, they were giving them out free at the theater when I went to go see it. But it's it's got a lot of... It, it's definitely... It does... It is kind of a failed attempt at, at a remake. And it's got a lot of flaws in the film. But I don't think it, it's just, it's worse. It, it's still, I think, the third movie is still possibly the worst. And at least in its film... But it's still not a good fucking movie. Actually, on the topic of other films, I'm also, at least I've got a guilty pleasure for is comic book films. But on the topic of that, uh, since I've got, at least I've got also a good, at least uh, de decent collection of comic books. I've got a box also of comic books. Yes, I read them. I love reading them, especially if I want some listening to a record, I'll, I'll read certain comic books. And I'll probably here, here in a second even get to some of my favorite comic book characters as well. But I've got at least one of the Dark Horse comic books with Robocop that at least was released, I think, after the third film was was released. And the story and the Dark Horse, uh, or at least one of the, the Robocop story for Dark Horse. So it's not the one that Frank Miller used, but the other one. Good God, it's using, I think, some of the same characters from the third film, but the story and overall, it's like a sequel to it. But it's a much better fucking story than the actual third film. And it's actually in many ways what could have been a third film. I would prefer the story in that Robocop comic uh, series more so than the actual third film. Because it actually feels like an in more connection to the first two. 
in many ways, and it's got the feel of the first two. It's violent, and Ed Def and Ed 209 is is used like a goddamn beast. He ain't used uh, like how he was used in the third film, which made him, which really fucking stripped away any of the the uh, the intimidation and the badassery of Ed 209. Or ED two hundred nine, whatever. How uh, Richard Cox, I think, had the re his character referred to as. Uh, actually, I think it was Ed two hundred nine. He re he referred to it in the first RoboCop. But goddamn, he's a guy. He's just as threatening and intimidating as he was in that first movie. Oh my god! And the and the thing is, after our bad guy apparently is using Ed two hundred nine, he as a way to kind of send the uh, the guy who's his his um rel his rel relinquished papers. His relinquished paper is getting killed by goddamn Ed Tony. He blows him into fucking chunks like how he did that one guy and uh, the first Robocop. And I, and while in comic book form, it's not as bloody. But given in its tent, at least it's trying to paint such a violent picture. It'd be on the same level of violence as at least in the first Robocop. And goddamn, I wish that was the story for the third film and not the goddamn story that we fucking got. Which was just so... PG for the sake of it, even though it does kind of, even though it's got some fucked up humor a little bit in that film, and I'm not going to elaborate on some of the humor, even though I don't mind it, it's actually in some ways, is kind of, actually has more of a way of fitting in within, within today's world, but still, I, it's not a great movie to begin with. So, I'll just leave it there. Again, I love action movies. Action films and horror movies are pretty much my favorite choice of films. I do like a few suspense films. I like suspense films, though, that really kind of blend in a little bit of a horror, or at times even action element into them. As far as comedy films, I'm not a big fan of comedy films, because some of them, I mean, they're, they're more so dumb humor than anything, like guilty pleasures. I consider comedies more like guilty pleasures than actually... And then... You know, uh, what my, what's the word I'm, I'm using? That then essential cinema. It's fun for what they are. And yes, there are some pretty good comedies out there that I also dig. But to me, they're more guilty pleasures than uh, than anything else. And I think they're basically they're just again they're not really essential cinema unless I think there are again I'll say there are at least some good comedies that might be really considered especially ones that tend to really have a more of a serious meaning to them but they still are meant uh, are seen as comedies I do like that I do dig some of that because uh, it definitely has a way of sinking your teeth into instead of uh, just making you feel like you're just uh, having a beer and having snacks and so on or just throwing again for, for that as just background noise and so on you know uh, I know I, m I might have seen that was kind of I might have sounded kind of harsh towards comedy films I mean because especially today there seems I uh, whoever I'm friends with some definitely tend to be really harsh towards comedy and that's because of modern day comedy films see these days which can be can, are, at times are, are not too bad but for the most part there are definitely some pretty bad comedies that come out Especially when it came to at least uh, the mid to uh, especially mid, mid to late 2000s and of course the 2010s, there are definitely some pretty stupid fucking comedy films that make you almost almost feel bad for even being a fan of of one, of that genre of at least of cinematic films. But yeah, crazy. And again, um, since then, for also now back to the topic of comic book films, I do. I almost consider them guilty pleasure, but there are some great fucking comic book films that really do come close to my my uh, preferences of like horror movies and action films. Again, I love the uh, the Punisher films. I even I do dig the one with Dolph Lundgren. I dig the ones with freaking uh, uh, Thomas Jean and oh god, the other guy who I'm now I kind of uh, Ray Stevens, I, uh, which was Punisher War Zone. I love those movies. All right, I fucking love them. They're to, to me. Uh, even though they're comic book based films, but as far as action films, they fucking deliver when it comes at least to action. They're just fucking badass action films. The violence and the gore and the, again, just all the language. It's pretty much what you expect from just at least a good, you know, decent, great, fun action film. So I dig that. Uh, another one of my favorite comic book characters also on that, on that kind of topic is Spawn. Though, I don't mind the film that came out in 97, but it definitely wasn't nearly as close to what was at least in the comic books and the HBO animated series, which 
I, I, I'm very, very good. I have. It's been years since I've seen the HBO series of Spawn, but I, I've been. I've got some of the comic books and reading some of them, especially the one that had a. Uh, oh God, uh, what was that one killer? Was it Kincaid? I think they called him. I think they referred to him as Kincaid, and he was like a this fucking. A child killer of some sort, and the thing is, there's at least a a, a, a at least a plot there that really kind of uh, sows the plot be that really connects it to, of course, uh, the character Spawn and uh, the 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 bad guy Jason Wynn. Which, while on, on the top of the film, while I think it was a great idea that they picked uh, Martin Sheen as uh, Jason Wynn. Just that when you see the character in the comic books or even the cartoon and then watching the film, it, I think it undermined it because Martin Sheen would have been great if it was very much close to how uh, Jason Wynn was in the comic books. Martin Sheen would have, was a, would have, was a, a, in many ways would have been a great fucking perfect cast and he was good for the part, but I don't think they used him to the way that they should have been using the character because Martin Sheen would have been great playing the care, the actual Jason Wynn in the comic books and uh, the car because he was a, he's a fucking, oh my, this dark, sinister, corporate, uh, motherfucker basically, basically also the way he fucked over uh, the spawn uh, before he turned into spawn and that it was he was a it, it would have been and the thing is it would have been also some great action in some of there that would have been in and in same ways even horror movies as well and then also on the topic of great horror and action films I loved also the Evil Dead films and I think uh, if spawn was done right it would have been next to that it would have been a great fucking combination of just Great action, but also great horror, and at times even drama. That's why I'm kind of I'm very I hope I'm just very curious on what Todd McFarlane is going to do with, of course, the newer, um, for sure the the newer uh, Spawn film. What he's going to do with it? I mean, he always been he's been in talks of wanting to do a newer Spawn film. He's been wanting to. But again, especially with the whole pandemic, it's really definitely hindered that. And I think in many ways he was so fucking... It seemed like he was really gotten close to finally uh, doing it. Because he was really getting close. He was going to be, again, he was uh, assigning himself as the actual director. And apparently he was in talks of, of good uh, writers as well to get on board. And great uh, staff and so on. It seemed like he was close to that. But he could very well still be in search of at least coming up with a good one to kind of finally get everything into place. Because I'm really interested in what it's, what's going to come out of at least the film. Because again, I'm a big fan of the character. And, and again, I, I really do hope that uh, that the, at least the film is at least as close to at least what I've seen in the comic books and the HBO animated series. So I think I think Spawn is definitely one of the best comic book characters. Also, Spawn is very related to metal as well because I Start did a uh, album uh, all inspired by, of course, uh, the comic book character Spawn, which was uh, the Dark Saga, which I haven't heard the album. I've never listened to the album, but I know that uh, for the fact that I probably should just because of, I'm a big fan of that character anyways. All right, so I guess in many ways this podcast has gone on for a little bit too long right now, but this was definitely a long one. I definitely... I mean, I was able to really get in a fucking good rant here in this in this uh, podcast and little let my emotions definitely run through a little bit. But I was able to get that out of my system. And, of course, I got to at least talk about some movies. And, of course, I know some people probably would have expected the typical wrestling talk. But I don't really have anything to talk about at this point. Even though I've enjoyed everything, at, again, what um, WWE NXT has been putting out. And, of course, AEW uh, and so on. I I've been enjoying that. Uh, and Impact, it's 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 decent, but it still has some flaws to it. I still wish they could f fix some of it because, again, there's some great guys on that roster. All right, so anyways, I hope you all enjoyed. Again, if you want to still... Uh, if you want me to keep the, the, the Q&A segment going on to, to, of course, episode number nine, get in your questions on, of course, uh, in the comments section. I am going to up it up this time. On another way, how you guys can probably can get questions to me. I'm going to, of course, uh, put my gmail.com uh, link or my gmail account link 
or in the description box so you can of course can email me anything any of your questions so on and what you want to ask me for at least that might be related to of course um the uh, the Nat 2 is, of course, uh, to when it comes to Q&A segments on these on these Nasty Metal Podcast episodes. That's another another option. So I'm going to make that another option as well for you. Because I think it would be it's an interesting and it's an easy way for anyone to get a hold of my, at least, of my email account. Especially my just my Gmail account. I'm not going to give you my fucking Yahoo account. I've, I've had enough issues with the fucking Yahoo account. I do not like Yahoo's uh, platforming as much. Even though I have to always go in there to fucking check for shit. But they... I, I don't like their fucking layout and it's too goddamn stupid and i once had an issue with uh, when it came to uh the sign and stuff fuck yahoo it's ran by morons gmail is at least while i think there's some idiots at least in google at least i think it's at least more coherently better and i'm able to at least get to it and look through it a lot more better i mean it's more easy to access than fucking yahoo it's bullshit with yahoo but gmail it's fine. I can. E- it's very easy and very easy to a lot more use, and it's more accessible. So I'm leaving you that, of course, that that uh, Gmail account link, and of course uh, the description box, where so you can at least can use that as an option to get questions out to me. But you always still can use the the comment section as well. So again, you got two options to get questions to me. So with that, I hope all enjoyed. This is Fred Thrasher. Sam out, and I'll see y'all later. Take care, everyone, and have a good fucking weekend. Take care. Just a reminder, sometime next week, there will be, of course, a announcement video, and, that, and of course, that announcement will be regarding the, well, the future, of course, Metaltober, which, of course, is, again, is every single October every year. Which, again, it's all, again, this channel ends up being themed all around at least Halloween based stuff and of course uh, that announcement were regarding of what will be of course this this year's Metaltober So with that I just want want to kind of talk a little bit. So again everyone good day and take care